John Justice Show, live right now, right now, on the CW58. Uh, right. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. They were talking about Paul Cunningham's office because oh, yeah. it's always 5 o'clock there. So, um, All right. We're talking gun control. Okay. I want to grab a few phone calls. Sure. Um, the holdovers from last hour, just getting you up to speed. We were we were playing a couple stories from Kagan on your side. Reaction to the, the gun legislat- uh, legislation that's working through. We had a stroller jam with a handful of mothers that went out. Uh, moms demand action. Um, and they were looking at, at mothers against drunk driving as the as as the example. Poor example. Yeah, and I'll, I'll let you. And you were you were commenting on that when you walked yeah, in, but I'll let you. Day. I'll let you. Well, uh, I mean, mothers of drunk against drunk driving were effective because the scourge on society was not the automobile that the drunk drivers were driving. It was the drunk drivers. So they went after the source, which is the individuals that overconsumed and overindulged in alcohol, and went out and became a threat to society. Rather than focusing on what is the threat to society here in this case, which are the seriously mentally ill who the liberal left refuses to accept the fact because they're afraid of stigmatizing people with mental illness, that people that are nuts shouldn't get access to guns. And I don't know of any lawful law abiding citizen out there that has any heartburn with separating nut jobs like Jared Loeffner from firearms. Right. I mean, I mean, there's nobody. So if they want to be effective and model Mothers Against Drunk Driving, they have to go after the root cause of these mass shootings and the root cause of this violence, which are criminals and mentally unstable people. If they do that, they may have some effect. But if they go after the gun, an inanimate object, incapable of forming any kind of conclusion, or it has no thought processes because it has no brain, it sits there until someone touches it and picks it up. Now, how that is their threat, I don't know. I, I don't know. Again, against mother, Mothers Against Drunk Driving would have gone nowhere if they tried to put Ford, Chevy, GM, all these guys out of business. They would have gone nowhere. But, but you know, these guys want to waste their time and wear the wheels off their strollers and whatever. Let's go and talk with uh, Steve. Good morning, Steve. Welcome to John Justice Show. You're also on with Frank Antonori. I think there's two things. One, Frank hit. Um, MAD didn't go after your right to purchase alcohol. It went after stricter consequences for Correct. the use of alcohol. Yep. And two, all you hear about is this comprehensive background checks. They are not telling us what's in the bill. All they talk about are online purchases. Oh, it's out now because I've seen what's in the, in the bill. Uh, it, is, it is very, uh, let's just say, that the argument that it isn't going to inhibit your ability to keep and bear arms is, is baloney. It has significant in, uh, uh, prohib- prohibitions on the ability of people to possess a firearm. And, and that's something that is the media isn't talking about it. But if you go read the bill, there's two provisions in there that really will, if you as a lawful gun owner loan a gun to somebody, you now are eligible to be imprisoned if this bill were to pass. It is illegal to loan someone a firearm. Loan someone a firearm without doing a background check on them. I mean, mm. that's in the bill. And, and then there's another provision in there with regarding to selling or transferring it, which... Which, again, I, I talked about earlier, that now if I die and I want to, in my will, give my guns to my kids, they all have to go through a background check in order to inherit what is rightfully theirs, which is family heirlooms and family possessions. They have to go and pay anywhere between 40 to $100 per gun, which could be, not bragging here, but several thousand dollars in my case. Okay, and many other people who have gun collections, it's going to be very expensive to do that. And that's in this bill. And nobody wants to bring that up because if every gun owner out there knew what was truly in this bill, their universal background check argument would fall apart. Because when they use the euphemistic term, most people believe, well, of course, when you go buy a gun, you should get a background check. I agree with that. Right. They don't understand that this thing is far more than the retail transaction of purchasing a firearm. This goes well beyond that and has a significant impact on people's freedom. Now, you may or may not know the answer to this, but the first thing that popped into my head when you were talking about loaning somebody a gun, and it's been a while since I've been to the gun range, but correct me if I'm wrong, if you go out to the gun range, you're there with your buddies, you've got multiple types of weapons that you're that you're that you're shooting. This right. is recreation. Um, and say you and I went out there and I've got one gun, you got another one, I said, Hey, I'd like to fire your gun. I wonder, do you know if that falls under well, that uh, under under that, that the way I read it, if if it's where you are Meaning aren't, you're loaning it to me and I'm firing right, it's it now. If, if you come by my house on your way to the range 
and you say, Frank, hey, I, I want to go buy a 9 mil. You have okay. the kind of 9 mil that I want to buy. Can I borrow that 9 mil so I can go shoot it today? I want to see what it's see like. What Give it's it a like. test run. And, and I don't go with you. So if I'm at the range with you and I let you, you hand shoot, it over, that's, we're good. O- that's okay. But, but if still. I, but if, I let, if, <laughs> if you come by my house and say, Frank, can I borrow your, your pistol? I'm thinking about buying one, and I know you have the kind. I want to just try it. And I loan you that gun. I am breaking the law Th- if this passes. And how? I mean, and that happens a, a lot. lot. A lot. <laughs> I, have, a lot. I, have, I have borrowed firearms from people for guns that I have been thinking about buying because it's, it's like a test drive. You cannot go to Walmart or Sportsman's Warehouse or, or Cabela's or, or Bass Pro Shops and go test shoot a gun. Uh, you just can't. They, they don't like that because it isn't new anymore. Right. It becomes used. So to have a friend who already owns a firearm that is nice enough to loan it to you for a couple days so you can go out over the weekend and try it and, and, and see what it's like is awesome. And that is going to be taken away from us. That is, in this bill passes, that ability that is going to be taken away. Now, let's, let's, follow this, let's follow this down the road for a sure. minute. Okay, so the bill gets passed. That's in it. That scenario you laid out happens. You're going to, just in my, as I'm thinking this, you're going to put those gun ranges or those stores that have them in, in the store where you can where you can target shoot, you're going to put them in a position, and I don't know what the rules already are, that if you show up there with a weapon, they're going to have to check the background of that weapon to you. Do they do that now? No. no. Okay. But they would, I mean, what kind of liability is that particular location going to have if I borrow a gun, the law passes, I borrow a gun from you, I want to see what the 9 millimeter a, feels like. There and, is a proposed amendment to the bill that includes that requirement that you're talking about, that anyone that's in possession of a firearm would be required to have liability insurance as well. And what they're going to do with that is they're going to make it, again, if you're uh, on the low end of the socioeconomic ladder, and you don't make a lot of money, but you own one or two firearms, you're going to end up having to surrender those guns because they're going to make you go out and get insurance, just like you get car insurance. And if you can't afford the insurance, like if you, have a, if you can't drive your car because you can't afford it and you've got to ride the bus, uh, the taxpayer-subsidized transit system here, <laughs> it, it, it's similar. So you would not be able to own a firearm unless you had insurance, liability insurance. And they haven't hammered out what that is. Is it going to be a rider on your homeowner's insurance? You're going to have to go out and get special insurance for gun liability to, to own a firearm. You know, this is the stuff that, again, is going to make it. They want, they want to tax ammunition. They want to, they want to create a cost-prohibited environment for gun ownership. And that is an infringement on the Second Amendment. I, any way, shape, or form, if you make it difficult for someone to own a firearm, that is called infringement upon the right to keep and bear arms. And that's what this bill does. And the president could say all day long, oh, and, and, and Harry Reid can say, oh, there's no infringement on the Second Amendment. That's baloney. It significantly infringes upon the Second Amendment. There's double, there's, oh, two or three stacked infringements on there. Now, there's two things. Uh, that, and then we got to take a break. But there's two things that come to mind. First off, 